Okay, strength session design. This, it, it seems so strange to me to, to go to an in-depth video on an overall strength session design because we can go into it for hours and hours and hours. But I want to make sure that you know that it's very, very simple and that it's very easy to implement. Okay. When we are looking at strength training for climbing, we have to remember that we're climbers who are trying to get stronger, not just gym rats trying to put muscle on. And so we try to stay to some very, very basic movement patterns. We have five movement patterns that we train, um, and we try to train those on a regular basis in order for the athlete to see an improvement there. The regular basis can be anywhere between every other day and once a week, and you might still see some improvements, and that's up to a, a very individualized uh, way, of, way of judging it. So um, we start out with an upper body press, and that would be like a bench press movement, a push-up movement, or like an overhead pressing movement. We do upper body pull, where we're gonna pull the loads toward us, like in a rowing motion, or even like a pull-up motion. We do hip hinging, and that's where I'm gonna be straightening my hips under load. We'll do that usually in the form of a variation of the deadlift. Squat or knee dominant movement pattern, that will be everything from regular squatting movements to our single leg variations like split squats to a pistol squat, um, even the step ups. Basically everything you do when you're straightening the knee. And then midsection training. This is high load core training where we're trying to improve your ability to maintain stiffness in the, in the midsection. Okay, and so when you're designing your strength training session, probably everybody watching this video will know an exercise in each one of these and they'll say, oh yeah, I really can do push-ups. I'm good at this. I'll put that in as my upper body press. Okay, so we like to start out, make, keep it really easy. So we do three sets of, of each of these exercises and we'll do somewhere around five reps. Um, a lot of athletes will go, oh yeah, five reps, I can do five push-ups, that's really easy. Why are your workouts so pissed? Okay, the reason that we ask for five reps is because five reps is a strength load. If you can do five push-ups, we want you to increase the load or the difficulty of it. Go to one of the one-arm variations. Go to a wide, a wide stance push-up. But do something to where your body is being overloaded within those five reps. So you do three sets of five of, say, uh, a bench press three sets of five pull-ups. You can add load or reduce load based on your strength. Hip hinge, three sets of five deadlifts. Squat or knee dominant stuff, three sets of five front squats. Um, and then three sets of five of the difficult core variations, such as an ab wheel or a straight leg raise. Something that's gonna challenge you. Again, just getting your abs pumped isn't actually gonna improve your, your ability to function. Okay, we do three sets of five, three sets of five. You do that for several weeks. Maybe you're doing it every third day. Um, eventually, you get stronger, and these loads start to become very, very difficult for you. At some point, you won't be able to do all of these movements in a given session. And so, then we'll do split sessions, where we'll only do half of these. Maybe we would do upper body press in our A group, and maybe um, the hip hinge would be in our A group too. And then you could do midsection in the A group. And so on Tuesdays, you might do the A exercises. On Wednesdays, you might do the B exercises. And maybe we'll also do a B core exercise because you can do a different one here and still not overload the pattern. And so your Tuesday sessions here, Wednesday sessions here, take a rest day Thursday, then you go back into the cycle. Again, you stay near that three sets of five. You can always vary this slightly. We'll say three to five sets of three to five reps, but this is a really good starting position, okay? When we look at these patterns, you can continue to put in different exercises. You're not just stuck with an overhead press, um, with, uh, with pull-ups, whatever. As you learn exercises, as you master them, and as you can do them really, really well, you can start implementing them in your training programs. The one thing I'll caution you against is too much variability or randomness in here. When you pick a pulling exercise, you should stick with it for four to six sessions, which probably is around a month's training, um, and then move on to the next, the next style. I also would encourage you to, to think about using unilateral one-arm movements versus bilateral movements. 
things like going to single arm pull-up variations or single arm pressing variations um, for one whole cycle and then switching back to the bilateral ones. Most of what we do in climbing is um, either going to be one arm at a time, one leg at a time, or at least at different levels where we're pulling um, and not in this normal bilateral movement we'd get in, a, in the classic weight room. Okay, this doesn't take much out of you. It doesn't take too much time. And building a good strong foundation like this is going to allow you to have a greater capacity to do the stuff you really like to do. So even though it feels like weight training takes away from your climbing when you first doing, start doing a weight training program, eventually it's going to allow you to do more and higher quality climbing. Keep it really simple. You don't need to make it crazy. Keep it three to five sets, three to five reps, and stay within these basic movement patterns.